how to organize your wedding on a budget. Introduction. He's popped the question. The ring is on your finger. Now comes the stressful part. You want to throw the wedding of your dreams but you're not Donald Trump's kid. What do you do? Statistics say the average wedding costs $20,000. Most young girls dream of the fairy tale wedding. Long white gown, eight bridesmaids, a sit-down dinner, the band everyone dances to. Many brides have been dreaming about their wedding day since childhood. These dreams come with an expensive price tag and the realization of their fairy tale day may be distant. Although weddings are very costly today, your dream day can happen. I am going to share some tips to cut corners and save money without making huge sacrifices. By taking the time to plan and investigate, you will be amazed at the amount of money that you save. Would you arrive at an interview for your dream job without prior preparation? No you would not and that is why preparation and research will make your wedding a success without remortgaging the house. It's only natural to want the Cinderella fantasy wedding complete with ice sculptures a heavenly cake and thousands of guests who've flown in from around the world to enjoy the accompanying dinner. It's only human to cry at the bill that this dream can rack up. Costs can add up quickly. Factor in the meal the liquor the music the dress the flowers the photographer the decorations and the dream wedding can seem way out of your league. But it doesn't have to be. How can the average person have a beautiful wedding with all the bells and whistles on a working person's salary? Perhaps the three letters words that say it best to DIY do it yourself. Spending your life savings on your big day is crazy. You can have elegant beautiful weddings without breaking the bank. Having a cheap wedding doesn't mean giving up style or sentimentality. It means using your imagination, using your own hands or the help of friends and family. Ask you know to help anyone out. Almost everyone will be happy to oblige. They will be part of your special day which makes them special as well. This book will give you the best tips and tricks from the experts to cut costs without cutting class and sophistication. Number one will know that your budget equals the grocery bill of a family of four. They will be oblivious as they toast the new couple and enjoy a party to put all other parties to shame. We'll explore ways to save on all aspects of your wedding. Don't think you have to give up anything because it can all be covered. All it takes is the cooperation of your family and friends coupled with a little positive self-talk and perseverance. I have been married twice don't worry. I got it right the second time. For both of my weddings, I had amazing ceremonies and receptions for around $2,000. They were the talk of the town both now and then. Throughout this book, I will tell you what we did to save money and still have an amazing wedding reception. Hopefully, you can gain some insight into a dream event for not a lot of money just like we had. Let us show you how to throw a dream wedding on a shoestring budget. Where to start? There's so much to do it can be mind-numbing. Don't worry, I planned and held my first wedding in two months and my second wedding in three months. If you have the luxury of a year or more feel lucky. We'll provide you with a wedding planner at the end of this book for you to keep with you as you plan your dream wedding. Planning is essential so our checklist could be your best friend. You may want to invest in a cheap folder to keep all of your notes in order. Print out the checklists at the end of this book and keep them in that folder along with any receipts and quotes that you get. You need to decide who will pay for the wedding. The typical wedding planner dictates that the bride's parents pay for the wedding. In reality these days that isn't always the norm. My second husband and I both have two sets of parents. We had been living together for eight years, but were ill-equipped to throw our own wedding. We could contribute sure but to throw the whole shin dick would be out of our realm. We asked each parent couple to contribute $500 and they all agreed wholeheartedly. That gave us a budget of $2,000 which was plenty. We're assuming you want a traditional ceremony as opposed to a theme wedding. That information alone could compose a whole other ebook. Assuming you want a traditional wedding, the first decisions to be made include the date your attendance and where the reception will be where your reception will be held is another huge decision that has to be made early on in the wedding planning stage. If you want to opt for a traditional reception hall you'll have to book early to be sure you can get the venue of your choice. If you or someone in your family is a member of a benevolent association the Elks, the Moose, the American Legion consider these as viable options. They often give discounts to members and you will probably have access to a huge area for your wedding reception as opposed to Aunt Emily's backyard. Just remember to book early. 
With my first wedding, we married on a Saturday and held our reception in the church parish hall. It was a Catholic church and they graciously allowed us the ultimate leniency with liquor, food etc. Since we were members of the church we only paid $50 to rent it for the afternoon. My second husband and I chose to be married on a Saturday at our local church and held the reception at the local American Legion where both my future husband and my father were members. We saved a ton by booking the Legion the day after my husband and I decided to marry. Plus we saved on the headache of trying to find a reception hall. We'll have much more on the dream reception later in this book but remember to book early. Having that out of the way will free up more of your time to concentrate on the little details that can mean so much. You can also look to find a free place to hold your reception such as a friend's home a church's reception hall or even the local fire department's reception hall. You could look into a local park art gallery, and even your own home. You'll need to start on a guest list as soon as possible and begin thinking about invitations. You're cordially invited. Ideally invitations should be mailed out six to eight weeks before the big day to give guests time to make arrangements to attend and RSVP back to you. The first step is to get organized. Remember when we suggested a folder earlier? This is where it comes in especially handy. Begin by making a list of the people you just can't stand to get married without them there. This will probably be mostly relatives and close friends. Ask your parents and the groom's parents to provide you with a list of who they would like to invite. Make sure you have accurate addresses for your guests. One caution here, don't think you have to invite everyone you know. If you haven't talked to your high school lab partner since graduation, he or she probably doesn't need to be invited. And don't get all caught up in possibly offending someone by not inviting them to your wedding. Often people get sick of attending weddings for people they barely know. Unless you talk to them every day, chances are pretty good that they won't give it a second thought when your invitation doesn't arrive. Remember you're trying to save some money on your big day. Extra people means extra expense cut corners here. Once you have your guest list you'll have an idea of how many invitations you'll need. Next you'll need to pick a design. Wedding invitations shouldn't be a big expense for you. Yes when it's delivered or pretty in its customized envelope and small tissue square inside, it can make an impression for about a minute. Most people read it once see note the date take out the RSVP card and throw the invite away. So why spend a lot on them? Remember we're trying to save money here. The obvious thing to do with your invites is to create them yourself on your personal computer. You can use Microsoft Word or Publisher to create beautiful invitations that are all new. There also are inexpensive programs out there specifically made for creating invitations and greeting cards. The best part about buying programs like this is being able to use it again after the wedding is over. I've had this program save me many times to print out a special occasion card birthday anniversary at the last minute if I've forgotten. You can buy heavy card stock at any office supply or discount store. Consider some pre-printed stationery which is also available at most office supply stores. Not really hyped up on using up all your printer's ink on your wedding invitations. Take them to a specialized copy shop or office supply store. They can usually copy onto whatever paper you want heavy card stock, pre-printed etc. and in color if you choose. You could also print out simple text of your invitation then use rubber stamps or embossing powder to decorate them. Keep in mind though the number of invitations you'll need to embellish. If you're looking at a few hundred you could be up nights just decorating them. The traditional practice for wedding invitations is to put the invitation inside an envelope and then place that envelope inside another envelope. Why bother? One envelope is plenty and you'll only need one stamp to mail if you use one. If you're doing your own invitations check with some small local print shops for leftover envelopes they might have. You can buy these at usually discounted price. Don't get freaked out if you have several different sizes or styles. How many people are going to ask each other at your wedding what size envelope their invitation came in? If you need to have RSVPs consider putting it on a small postal size card. That way you eliminate an envelope and it adds to the convenience for your guests. All they have to do is fill it out and drop it in the mailbox. Of course you'll have to provide the stamp for this card. Consider also printing reception information directly on the invitation itself. 
for an RSVP provide a phone number and or email address for guests to respond to. Not only will this save you on postage you'll have all the information right there for your guests to refer to before the big day instead of them having to save a separate reception card. You can use labels to print out addresses on your computer. We would suggest getting the clear labels as it just looks better. The most prominent label maker is Avery. Their website offers free templates to print out your labels so you may want to check that out before struggling with a software program. If you don't like the impersonal nature of address labels address the envelopes by hand. You can get information about calligraphy online or just use your best handwriting. Some brides don't want the hassle of do-it-yourself invitations. We happen to have a friend who sold wedding invitations as a side business at an incredible cheap rate and she offered up a discounted rate as a wedding gift. We ended up with 300 invitations for just $60. Not everyone can be that lucky, however, check out places online for the most savings. Finally when it comes to wedding invitations one of your largest expenses is going to be the postage. You really have no control over that unless you're the postmaster general and even then I doubt it. You may want to hand deliver some invitations to save on postage. I know I would prefer to have the bride or groom personally hand me their invitation. It tells me I'm special to them and I know it's saving them the cost of a stamp. So what's next? The bride of course. Finding the perfect gown can be a long and tedious procedure. Read on for tips to save money while finding the most beautiful dress for you to say, I do, in. What to wear, what to wear. Cinderella's princess gown was tailored by mice. In fairy tales that's an easy solution. In real life, it's much more daunting. Finding the perfect gown is very important to every bride-to-be. Most girls want to feel like a princess as they walk down the aisle to their prince charming. You can look like a princess without spending a whole month's rent on your dress. Do you really need a handmade wedding dress with beads and diamonds? This is where the big cost is and there are several options in cutting the cost. First and foremost consider wearing your mother or grandmother's wedding gown, assuming they still have them. Can you imagine the pride on their faces as they watch you stroll down the aisle toward your future husband wearing the very gown they wore doing the same thing? Think the gown is a bit out of date. If you don't like the style, consider hiring a seamstress to update the cut a bit. You can often find a seamstress or tailor for around $100 well less than the cost of a new, off-the-rack wedding gown. Why not opt for a second-hand wedding dress? It's probably only been worn once anyway and you can get a once expensive dress for half the price. Check out consignment shops or thrift stores to see what they have to offer. Better yet check out ebay.com. Again if you can get a great deal on a gown and only need some alterations a seamstress will be only a fraction of the cost to buy the gown outright. Consider buying an evening gown cocktail dress from a department store. Look around prom season. These days many prom dresses can look like wedding gowns. A lot of specialty shops will run specials prior to prom hoping to cull their inventory. You can come across a great deal on a beautiful dress and look like a prom queen in the process. For my second marriage this is what I did. It wasn't prom season but homecoming season. I found the most gorgeous dress off the rack that fit me like a dream. They wanted to get rid of it and I managed to talk the owner into discounting it 40%. You may want to look around for closing out sales or liquidation sales at bridal shops in your area. One word of caution, don't drive the equivalent of halfway across the country just to find a gown. With my first wedding they were having a going out of business sale at the local bridal shop. I found a stunning gown that retailed for $800 for a mere $100 just because it was two days before they closed their doors. Another option is to rent your wedding gown. When my brother got married his wife rented her gown. It was a stunning number that retailed for over $3,500. She rented it for $75. Sure she couldn't keep it but considering that my first wedding gown is still in the vacuum sealed box and touched for over 20 years who really cares? I doubt my daughter will want to wear it although I'll certainly steer her toward this option with a seamstress on standby of course. Consider shopping online at a discount wedding store or even eBay. You won't get the pampering you do at a bridal shop but you can save up to 40% by going this route. You can have the dress altered locally if it doesn't fit just right. 
Finally you can realize incredible savings on your dream gown by picking one out and asking a local seamstress to copy the design. This probably won't be the most cost-cutting measure but you can have a designer gown for about half the cost you would pay directly from the designer. If you find a good seamstress, they should be able to copy the design for a significant savings what would be even better than that. If you or someone you know sews, pick out a pattern at the local discount store by the fabric and notions and make the dress your own for a fraction of the cost. What about the veil? Many brides these days eschew the traditional veil over the face in favor of a more contemporary design. That's fine and even beautiful. It's all a matter of preference. But don't fall for the inflated prices of a handmade veil at the local bridal shop. I splurged on my first wedding for a to-die for long beaded veil with a Juliet cap that cost more than my dress. It was a gift from my grandmother so I didn't feel guilty. It was the ultimate headpiece for my dream wedding and I love putting it on for kicks to this day. For my second wedding, I fell in love with a flowing tiara veil on display. The price tag, however brought me back to reality. Imagine my surprise when my mother found a similar tiara of flares for $1.99 and bought the tulle for the veil at just $0.99 cents a yard. She added satin ribbon to match the satin ribbon on my gown and a headpiece that would have cost me over $200 adorned my head for a mere $10. Want to know how to make your own wedding veil? It's much easier than you think. Follow the directions below and you can have a headpiece that's amazing. Start with a base. Many stores such as Claire's have cheap tiaras that can serve as your base. If you're not quite into a tiara, just have on hand some craft wire and some plastic combs to hold the veil in place. Have a blue gun on hand. Get some tool and attach it to whatever base you have. If it's a tiara, just glue directly to the headpiece. If it's comb, you'll need to create a halo to attach the tool to. Add the comb so you can put it in your hair. Most tiaras come with built-in combs. Simply glue the tool to your base and add any embellishments you want flowers, babies, breath, etc. Add accents like ribbons and bows for a special look. Also consider having simple flowers or babies' breath in your wedding coiffure. It's a beautifully simple touch to a beautiful day that will make you look like a goddess in the process. One note here about hair and makeup. You could splurge and have a beauty shop do you and your bridal party's hair but that's an extra expense that is really unneeded. Once see again call on family or friends to help. Do you know someone whose hair is always stunning? See if she'll help you out. Maybe you have a distant cousin who is a hairdresser. See if she'll donate her services as a wedding gift. When it comes to makeup the best look is your natural look. Most people want to see the bride dressed up in her finery but looking like the same gal they know. No need to cake on foundation if you normally don't wear it. Go for some light eyeshadow mascara a little blush and a pale lip color. You know how to do your own makeup. Do it on your wedding day too. Now that you're outfitted, what will your groom wear? What to wear for him? The traditional choice for the groom is a tuxedo. Where I come from buying a tuxedo is virtually unheard of. Renting is probably the way to go to realize the ultimate savings on the groom's attire. If you were to buy a tuxedo the average cost would be somewhere between $300 and $500. This is not exactly the way to go when trying to save money on a wedding. If you do want to buy your tux, check in thrift stores, consignment shops and online to find discounted tuxes. Buying off the rack will run you a lot more money. Renting a tux will run anywhere from $50 to $100 typically. That rental will include everything your groom will need to look like Prince Charming. This means cuff links, shoes, vest and tie. Many places offer the groom's tux rental free when the wedding party rents from the same store. Be sure to ask about a perk like this. If your groom wants to own his own tuxedo we suggest a local thrift store or consignment shop. You may also want to consider a discount wedding store or even online at eBay again. Yet another great consideration when outfitting the guys in your wedding party is to have them wear nice suits or even casual slacks and a nice shirt. Not every wedding party has to be ultra formal, it's all up to you. Now that you and your groom are outfitted let's talk about those loved ones who will be standing up with you. What they wear can be just as important as what you wear. What to wear part 2. The general rule of thumb for guys is that they will mimic what the groom is wearing. 
If the groom wears a tuxedo they will wear similar tuxedos as well. If the groom is outfitted in a suit they will wear similar suits. Remember our previous tip about renting tuxedos. Usually a rental shop will give the groom his tux rental for free if the groomsmen rent their tuxedos at the same shop. This can result in huge savings for everyone concerned. As far as the bridesmaids are concerned there are several more options to consider. First and foremost the style of dress you want them to wear. Traditionally bridesmaids are expected to pay for their own wedding attire. Because of this you as the bride should use good manners when deciding on what your attendants will wear. Please remember that not all bodies are built alike and not all dress styles look good on all types of people. In my second wedding my attendants included my 14 year old daughter, size 0, my baby sister, size 4, and my best friend who would be 8 months pregnant on wedding day normally size 7 but at the time of the wedding size who knows. My sister found three dresses exactly the same on clearance at a department store in the exact sizes we needed. Two of them were little too for her and my daughter the third one was bigger for my friend but which we altered to fit her condition. Total cost for all three dresses $50. Shop around are the keywords here. See what you can find with the parameters you have in mind and please remember that pink chiffon rarely works well at other places besides the wedding reception. If at all possible pick a style that will enable the bridesmaid to wear the dress at other places and other times. This will make them less reluctant to plunk down big bucks for a dress they'll wear once and have it hang in their closet until their next rummage sale. If you know someone who sews pick out a pattern and fabric at your local discount store and stitch up a masterpiece. Just as our tips for finding a wedding gown check out the bridal shops and see what you can find off their racks. Don't be afraid to ask for a discounted price. Many times they will grant your request just to clear their inventory. Now that we're outfitted, what comes next? Let's look at the wedding flowers. A rose is a rose. Cheap doesn't mean that your wedding flowers can't be beautiful. All flowers are lovely no matter what they cost. They can cost you a bundle but there are many ways to save yourself a bundle as well. The first decision to make is whether or not you want silk or real flowers. We recommend silk flowers because of the ease. However real flowers can be a beautiful addition to your wedding. Keep in mind that real flowers need to be nurtured even up to the moment you say I do. If you have someone who can monitor the freshness of your real flowers by all means, have them. If you want to save yourself and your loved ones a little stress choose silk. If you do choose fresh flowers, we recommend commissioning the services of a professional florist. Working with real flowers is an art that probably shouldn't be taken on by a novice. If you do commission a florist avoid using the W word wedding as they will most often charge you much more for wedding flowers as opposed to a few bouquets for a random event. Keep in mind that a professional florist will not save you any money. They come at a premium price to be prepared. Consider ordering fresh flowers from an online wholesaler. You can get some of the best prices around. However as we mentioned unlike at a florist you will be responsible for all of the prep work of cleaning and trimming them and keeping them alive until the wedding. If you're going for a simple look you might want to contact a local farmer. Where I live there is an iris farm who will sell you bulk irises at a discounted rate. Find your local farmer's market and pick up some freshly cut flowers for a simple bouquet. Consider also picking flowers from your own garden. Remember that flowers are simply garnishes. There's no need to go overboard with nosegays or handheld masterpieces for the ceremony. The real stars of the show are you or intended in your wedding party. The flowers simply add to the overall package. Consider calling a local community college for your flowers. Many local colleges offer courses in flower arranging. For a small fee they may be quite accommodating in allowing their students to practice for your wedding at a huge discounted price often for the cost of the flowers alone. Just be prepared for what you get. It might be beautiful, it might be mediocre. As stated before don't place too much emphasis on the flowers they are simply garnishes. Of course making your own flowers is probably the most frugal choice. But where do you start? Read on. Making your own CEREMON flowers. There are plenty of wholesale stores who will sell silk flowers at a greatly discounted price. Working with silk flowers is easy and can be done by almost anyone. My mother put together all the bouquets boutonnieres and corsages for both my weddings. She had no professional training. She simply had a bunch of flowers and some florist tape. 
they were utterly beautiful. Some basic equipment you'll need a floral wire, floral tape, wire cutters, flowers, greenery and decorative accents like baby's breath or smaller flowers. These instructions are mainly for silk flowers but can be used with real flowers as well. Silk flowers can be manipulated much easier than real ones, so keep that in mind. Tips for creating your own flowers are abundant. A beautifully simple idea for a gorgeous bridal bouquet is to take several white roses, bunch them together into a bouquet, wrap the bottom with floral tape tightly and wrap satin ribbon around the stems. Attach long pieces of satin ribbon to flow down as you hold the bouquet and it'll be stunning. You can use this technique with either silk or fresh flowers and it doesn't have to be all roses. For a unique look, try out different flowers in your wedding colors. You can also buy plastic nosegay holders at many discount stores that make preparing bouquets super easy. Don't worry if you can see the tape or wire. You can always disguise it with ribbon or filler. For your bridesmaids you can have them carry the traditional nosegay. Assemble it in the same way outlined above for the bridal bouquet. A very elegant look is to have each attendant carry a single flower or a few flowers put together with greenery and ribbon that they carry cradled in their arms. These are super easy to put together. Just take a few flowers, greenery and accents, gather the stems together wrapped with floral tape and add ribbon. For the balcony as simple is best especially since they will be worn by the men in your wedding party. Most guys don't want garish flowers adorning their bodies it's just a guy thing. To put together a balcony area take a single flower add a few green leaves and maybe a sprig of baby's breath. Wrap the stem in floral tape tightly and voila, you're bound. You can if you wish add a little bit of ribbon but don't go too overboard remember the guy thing. To make corsages use an odd number of flowers 3 or 5 is recommended. Make it just like you would the bow gather the stems and add greenery and filler. You'll want the corsage to be in a round shape or a long row. Once you have gathered all the flowers together wrap tightly with floral tape and adjust the stems for comfort be sure to add some pretty ribbon for accents. Many people just aren't sure how to pin on a corsage so here's a most helpful tip for anyone. The corsage should bend slightly over the collarbone so don't pin too far down. The wearer should be able to tip her head slightly to smell the flowers. Stick the pin into the fabric at the bottom left corner of the stem. Weave the pin back out from under the fabric. Push it through about 1 inch laying it at an angle over the top of the stem. Stick the tip of the pin back into the fabric on the other side of the stem. Ensure that the stem is tightly in place with the length of the pin pushing it down. Weave the pin back out of the fabric once more. Be sure that the very tip of the pin does not stick out nor does it poke under the fabric and touch the skin. Don't forget the pins. Go for the straight pin with a pretty pearl head on it. They can be found at most craft store quite inexpensively. Have plenty on hand just in case. The flower girl basket is probably the easiest of all wedding ceremony flowers. Just take a small basket preferably white and decorate it with ribbon and some small flowers. Many local florists will sell you rose petals for the flower girl to strew down the aisle quite cheaply. If they have some roses they aren't able to sell that are going bad they will usually part with the petals at a low price. Just as important could be the ring bearer pillow. Want to know how to make your own? Read on. The ring pillow from a wedding can become a treasured keepsake of a very special day and a family heirloom as well. Use high quality materials for the pillow and be creative. Experiment with different patterns, materials and textures before you decide on a final design. Choose two pieces of fabric that each measure between 8 and 10 inches square. Use white or off-white satin silk or brocade. If possible use the same fabric and lace that is used for the wedding dress. Choose lace and ribbon to decorate the pillow if desired. The amount required will depend on how the materials are used. About 2 to 3 yards each of ribbon and lace will be adequate. Use two or three pieces polyester batting as stuffing for the pillow. Each piece should be equal to the dimensions of the fabric squares in step 1. Use a fabric cutting board, ruler and fabric marking pen to mark and measure out two equal squares of fabric. Make all markings on the wrong side of the fabric. Test the pen on a scrap of the pillow fabric to make sure that the marks will fade. Do any embroidery or needlework before continuing to the next step. Add any other decoration to the face of the fabric as well. Embellishments such as small ribbons, charms and delicate lace can be tacked or sewn onto the fabric by hand. 
Add a lace ruffle to the pillow by pinning the straight edge of the ruffle to the right side of the fabric square that will form the pillow top. Pin so that the edges line up evenly and the right sides if there's a right side to the ruffle are together. Pin the ruffle very loosely onto the fabric or gather the ruffle slightly as you pin in order to create a fuller ruffle. Pin the fabric pieces with the right sides together. Edges should match up evenly. Pins should be placed about one half inch apart and should be at right angles to the fabric edges. Make sure that the pinned edge of the ruffle is caught securely between the two fabric layers. Use a sewing machine to stitch three sides of the pillow one half inch from the fabric edges. Turn the pillow right side out and stuff the batting layers inside. If you would like a fuller pillow insert additional batting. Fold the edges of the unsewn seam into the pillow one half inch and stitch close by hand. Use a slip stitch done by hand or carefully top stitch the edges with your machine. Add a 10 or 12 inch length of 1 quarter inch satin or silk ribbon to the top of the pillow. Stitch the ribbon by hand to the pillow at the ribbon's center point. Add a silk or satin bow made from the same ribbon to cover the stitching. Use the two ribbon strands to loosely tie the wedding rings to the pillow. Decorative flowers for the ceremony. As far as flowers and plants as decorations are concerned this can be a great enhancement to your ceremony. Many churches already have floral adornments on their altars. If you get married around the time of a church celebration you may be able to buy a few flowers and take advantage of those that are already there. For example around Easter lilies are the flower of choice in most churches. Many people will buy Easter lilies in remembrance of their loved ones. Offer to buy a couple of Easter lilies to add to the existing ones and you have a beautiful decoration on the altar. The same applies around Christmas. Poinsettias are the flower of choice at this time of year. Offer up a few poinsettia plants to add to those already there and you'll have some beautiful altar decorations. Large arrangements on an altar will only be seen from far away. Use inexpensive flowers such as carnations or large filling flowers such as snowball mums. If you are getting married in a church, almost all have some type of floral tree decorations that they have all the time. All you need to do in this situation is to add a few personal touches and you'll have a beautiful backdrop for your ceremony. This is what we did for my second marriage. We took the artificial ficus trees and arranged them around our other flowers to make for a beautiful altar. If you're getting married outside take advantage of nature. Cultivate what mother nature has to offer. When my cousin got married, he did so at a local park overlooking a lake. The flowers were in full bloom and it was beautiful. His wife later told me that she had been out at that park every day for two weeks just to make sure that the flowers would be gorgeous and they were. Talk to your venues and see if any other brides have booked for the same day. If the two of you can coordinate flowers and split the cost you'll save a lot of money. I would imagine both of you wouldn't turn your nose up at saving a ton of money on church decorations and flowers. Some party rental places will rent large potted plants such as tropical palms or ficus. They visually fill a lot of space and will help frame your ceremony site or warm up your reception. Best of all renting a potted plant is far cheaper than buying large flower arrangements. Also you may consider purchasing these large plants and using them in your home afterwards to get more use out of them. Almost everyone I knew owned an artificial ficus tree so I made several phone calls and asked if we could borrow them for our big day. Everyone was more than happy to offer up their trees and we used them to decorate the reception hall. More on that later, don't try to move your ceremony flowers to the reception hall. Many churches require you leave them anyway but moving large arrangements can be tedious and simply not worth the time or effort. The last thing you want is to have your reception held up waiting for flowers. Decorating the place where you will take your vows is just as important as how you decorate your reception. Let's look at how to make your ceremony picture perfect. Decorating the ceremony. We've covered the floral decorations for a church wedding but what else do you need to decorate the sanctuary? Because you're on a budget, remember that less is more. Most wedding ceremonies are short and sweet so why spend a majority of your money decorating a place where people are most likely only going to be for a half hour or so. If you want pew bows, they can be made quite inexpensively, but don't decorate each pew. Decorate every other one for the first 10 rows or so. Ribbon for bows can get quite expensive, so doing every other pew is the frugal thing to do. Making your own pew bows. 
Speaking from experience initial bow making can be extremely frustrating. Give yourself plenty of time and practice when you start this craft. While it may take a few tries to finally master it once you do you'll start cranking out the bows fairly quickly. Below are instructions for two different types of bows that can be layered for a more elaborate effect you'll need approximately 4.5 feet of one, wired ribbon approximately 4.5 feet of six, two more or less depending on how long you want the tails craft wire wire cutter, scissors. The tool base, one. Lay the ribbon horizontally. Find the middle of your strip of tulle and pinch together with your left hand. 2. With your right hand pinch the tulle on the right side about 8, away from the middle. 3. Bring the second pinch spot to the center moving underneath. This should form half of a bow. Pinch together the middle with your right hand. 4. Repeat the same thing with the left side only this time instead of bringing the tulle underneath to form the bow bring it over the top. 5. You should now have a simple bow. Secure the middle by twisting craft wire around it. If you'd like to stop here hot glue a silk flower in the middle to finish this simple project. However if you want your bow more ornate follow the next set of instructions to add a second layer. The second ribbon layer. 1. Lay the wired ribbon vertically on a table or flat surface moving away from you. Take the end closest to you bring it up and then tuck it into form a small loop. Pinch the loop in place. This will be the middle of the ribbon point two. Just after where you're now pinching, twist the longer end of the ribbon 180 degrees. Keep the twist tight and hide it underneath the middle loop. Grab the long piece of ribbon about six away from the middle. Then form a loop by bringing the ribbon underneath and back to the center. Pinch together. Three. Twist the long piece of ribbon again just after the center pinch. Make an equal sized loop on the other side using the same technique. 4. Continue making equal sized loops that rest directly underneath each other by using the same technique. Stop when you have 3 on each side. 5. Secure the middle with craft wire and leave some extra wire in order to attach it to the tulle base. 6. Cut off any tail you might have left over from the ribbon. 7. Spread out the loops to create the look you desire. Attaching. With the extra wire from the second layer, attach the ribbon bow to the middle of the tulle base. Consider adding long wire hooks or extra ribbon to the back for easy attachment to the pews. You may want to consider using simple floral swags at the end of each pew as well. These can be found inexpensively and made even more inexpensively. Many churches have single candle holders that you can use or rent for a nominal fee. If you're a member of the church ask. The clergy has had exposure to many weddings. He or she might have some terrific low-cost ideas you may not have thought about. What we did for my second wedding was an idea I had never seen before. My mother went to a discount store and found battery-operated candles the kind people put in their windows around Christmas time on clearance. They can also be found at craft stores or craft warehouses pretty cheaply. Mom attached a Velcro strip to the bottom of each candle and got permission from the church to attach a strip to the end of each pew. We bought a huge pack of batteries and attached one to the end of each pew. My eight-year-old cousin was responsible for twisting the base of each candle to turn them on right before the ceremony, a job she was quite proud of and we had a gorgeously lit sanctuary. If you're planning an outdoor wedding, the scenery will be your most dramatic decoration. Most couples opt for the traditional gazebo or arch when getting married outdoors. I've seen these on sale at a local wholesaler before at a mere $19.99. You can also rent the archway from a party rental place. Decorate it with flowers, Christmas lights or greenery to make it beautiful. Seating at an outdoor wedding usually consists of folding chairs. These can usually be found at a benevolent association like the American Legion excellent place to find seating especially if you're having your reception there churches or community centers. Even if you have to pay a few dollars to rent them, it will be worth it. Decorate the ends of the chairs with greenery and flowers to match your wedding bouquets along with strategically placed ribbon. To set off the important guest area parents grandparents etc cover the backs of the chairs with simple white pillowcases. All weddings are made much more special with an added touch contributed by music before, during and after the ceremony. Music at your ceremony Music for your wedding ceremony could consist of live or recorded performances. For pre-wedding music make a CD of songs that are meaningful to you as a couple. 
You can also use this CD for the processional and recessional marches. Do you know someone who plays the piano or guitar? Ask them to play for you at your ceremony. Nothing sounds as poignant as an acoustic guitar playing a beautiful ballad. Call your local high school or college for musicians. Recruit someone you know to sing during the ceremony. If you don't know anyone who sings, find a place where they're having karaoke and pick the singer you like best. Offer them a small fee to sing at your wedding and voila. You have a vocalist to make your day special. You want to be sure to have plenty of photos to remember your special day. Unfortunately a professional photographer can be a real budget buster. Read on for tips on how to save with wedding photography. And smile pretty. Pictures are priceless and you want to be sure you have plenty of good pictures of your special day. Unfortunately, if you're on budget, professional photographers can eat up most of your money. While they are definitely worth the price, they're not always feasible for people who need to save some money. So how can you get beautiful photos of your wedding day without breaking the bank? Let me tell you what we did. With my first wedding we were definitely on a budget and in no position to pay the $900 a professional photographer was asking and that was in 1985. My mother worked for a local newspaper and asked the head photographer there if he would be willing to take wedding photos for us. We paid for the film and developing, he took the pictures and he got to eat and party at our reception. The pictures were beautiful and we made our own albums at a fraction of the cost. Today, the local Walmart or photo processing studio will provide you with enlargements quite cheaply. For my second wedding, we called on family. You will see this same theme throughout this book when it came to my second marriage. My husband and I had lived together for eight years and were not really in need of a formal china service or a third toaster although we did need towels and sheets. Most of my family was happy to offer up their services in place of a wedding gift. My cousin is an amateur photography buff. She was more than happy to offer up her services to us. Once see again we bought the film and paid for the developing while she took the pictures and enjoyed the reception. This was no small feat as just two months prior to my wedding, she found out she was two months pregnant with triplets and was unsure she could even make the ceremony as it was a high-risk pregnancy. Luckily she was there and we got some beautiful pictures. Two months after that I had two amazing boy cousins and a precious little girl cousin join my family so even though she offered up her services as our wedding photographer as a wedding present we still provided her with a gift certificate to a local spa after the babies came as a special little extra for her effort and commitment to us. So how can you find similar services? We recommend you start with a community college. They often offer photography classes and the students are eager to practice their craft for a nominal fee or even just the experience. Talk to the instructor, however to be sure you're getting the cream of the crop the top in the class. You don't want to take a chance and get the beginner for your big day. Ask friends and family to see if anyone likes to experiment with photography as a hobby. Film can be bought in bulk at warehouse stores so if you have them take a multitude of pictures, you'll probably get more than several that are exactly what you wanted. Don't be afraid to call the local newspaper and ask to speak with the star photographer. You don't have to know anyone at the paper to offer up the chance for them to make some extra money. Many will perform the service for a small fee as long as you buy the film some may even offer their services for the experience. At the reception place disposable cameras on each table for guests to take pictures at your reception. A word of caution here, place a note on the table that asks the adults to please monitor the use of these cameras. I've been to many a reception where children have gotten hold of these cameras and the bride was left with many many pictures of people's feet and numb hind ends. Disposable cameras can be found again at bulk warehouse stores or even online. Shop around for the best price and use them sparingly. If you don't want to put the cameras on the table another idea is to place the cameras in a basket at the door as guests enter the reception. The ones who really care about taking pictures will take the cameras. Have your guest book attendant monitor who takes them or even have the attendant hand them out to adults only this later however when you can afford it and not have to figure it into your wedding budget this later. When it comes to chic elegant wedding pictures nothing beats the look of black and white photos. Black and white photos can be combined with all of the money saving ideas above. After the wedding the photos can be blown up and dry mounted for a long lasting keepsake black and white film can be much cheaper than color film as well. As far as video is concerned consider what a video will mean to you. 
Sure a video of your wedding is a pretty nice thing to have but let's face it who really watches this video? Your family may watch it one see after the wedding is over and you and your future spouse may bring it out on your anniversary every year but other than that the most public viewing of your wedding video will probably be at your 50th anniversary party and by then you will have had to pay a couple $100 to have your video converted to the latest format X. DVD I think a great way to save a $1000 is to ask yourself and family before your wedding, who owns the video camera that I know? Who do I know who has a hobby of videotaping? Maybe you know one person who owns a video camera but hates to tape and another person who has the patience and artistic ability to video but doesn't own a camera voila. You have your own videographer if both parties are willing to play their part and I think you will find that almost everyone is willing to help in whatever small way they can to help make your wedding a success. Of course it would probably be a good idea to lay down some rules for your videographer since they are using someone else's camera so just keep the camera with you at all times and don't let anyone else use the camera etc. The video was virtually unheard of at my first wedding but at my second wedding my stepdad wanted a behind the scenes role so he volunteered to man the video camera. When we got to the reception he set up the camera on a tripod and caught some very personal moments when the time dictated. I can honestly say that after five years of marriage, I've only watched my wedding video twice. I'm glad I did but if I would have had to pay a large amount of money to have it professionally done, I would be a bit sick. If you do have a friend or family member do your wedding video there are many studios around who can cut and splice parts of the video together and add background music later if you want a precious keepsake. You can do this later however when you can afford it and not have to figure it into your wedding budget. Once see the wedding has finished it's time to move to the reception. Let's consider different way to decorate your reception location. Decorate and reception reception hall. Your wedding reception is where your guests will spend the most time. As we've said before you should count on spending at least 40% of your budget on the reception. This includes the food, decorations, drinks, music, etc. But a beautiful reception doesn't have to break the bank. One see again count on your friends and family to help out. I can't tell you how many halls I've decorated just because someone called if you're a benevolent soul like I'm call in your favors when your big day comes. Let's first talk about the flowers and table decors. If you're having your reception in a hall like the Legion or the Moose be prepared to deal with the decor that is already there. We had my second reception at the Legion and there was a multitude of war memorabilia everywhere. Since War and War Heroes wasn't the focus of my wedding we found ourselves daunted by the various wall hangings that existed. What we decided to do was create a light in Wonderland. We called upon everyone we could think of to lend us their white Christmas lights. We married at the end of January so the Christmas decor was freshly put away or still stowed in the garage waiting for permanent stashing until the next season. We ended up with about 200 strands of lights. We strung them everywhere from the ceiling, woven throughout the figures trees even framing the Confederate soldier uniform. When the lights went out number one knew that we were in a memorialized wall to our military veterans. We brought the battery operated candles from the church and put them on all the tables. My uncle had some butcher paper that we spread over all the tables for tablecloths and every other one had floating candles in glass vases that we found wholesale at a craft store. We sprinkled blue glitter on the tables for a little glitz. If you decide to do this, take my advice use it sparsely and keep it mostly toward the center of the table. Glitter can be a huge mess if it's strewn about too randomly. It looks great but some guests won't be crazy about getting glitter on their good clothes. So what about other decorative ideas at the reception? Use the bridesmaids bouquets to decorate the tables the head table or the cake table. You don't have to have expensive floral arrangements everywhere to make a beautiful reception hall. There are many, many alternatives and most can be put together with supplies from the dollar store. The following suggestions utilize supplies that I found at the dollar store and make for gorgeous table decorations. Centerpiece suggestion 1. Buy some glass cereal bowls and place colored glass marbles in the bottom. Add water halfway up and put a floating candle in each. Instead of floating candles just add a regular votive in the middle of the marbles. When the reception is over the bride and groom will have a matching set of bowls. Centerpiece suggestion 2. Get some small terracotta pots and some florist's foam. 
Pick out some silk flowers in your wedding colors along with some greenery. Stick the flowers in the foam bunch tightly together and arrange to your heart's delight centerpiece. Suggestion 3. Take a silk rose and separate the bud from the stem. Disassemble the bud into individual petals. With a clear boated holder and a glue gun you will glue the petals onto the holder. Start at the top with the smaller rose petals. Place one petal next to another with the sides touching slightly. Once your first row is completed you can start on the next. Make sure to cover any bare areas at the bottom of the first row and work your way down the holder until the rose petals cover the entire surface. Take the leaf from the flower and attach to the bottom of the holder. This will give the illusion of a lighted rose once a candle is placed inside and lit. Centerpiece suggestion 4. Find picture frames of varying sizes. Gather together your favorite pictures of the bride and groom. Put the pictures in the frames and arrange on the tables surrounding them by clear glass marbles and some greenery. Centerpiece suggestion 5. Get some small baskets and decorate with ribbon. Print out some index cards that say advice for the newlyweds and lay them on the table with pens and or pencils. Encourage guests to write something on the cards and place them in the baskets. Surround the baskets with flowers, greenery or pebbles. This can be a great icebreaker for people who don't know each other. Be prepared, too for the jokesters in the crowd who may offer up some ridiculous and sometimes bawdy advice. Centerpiece suggestion 6. Take small grapevine wreaths and decorate with tulle and ribbon. Place a bottle of champagne in the center or a bottle of wine from a local winery. For extra fun, attach a balloon to the bottle centerpiece suggestion 7. Take two plastic champagne glasses and hot glue them together so that they cross when laying down. Hot glue four clear glass marbles inside each glass and tie a helium balloon to each. It will look like there are bubbles flowing out of your glasses as they lay on the table. We had balloons at both of my wedding receptions. Not only are they festive and fun they can help keep bored children entertained. Most dollar stores have helium balloons they will fill with purchase. However you may want to look into a portable helium tank and do it yourself. I found one at Walmart for $19.99 with balloons at $0.99 cents a bag. The tank filled up about 40 balloons so that's one way to save a little money on your balloons. Want some wacky and unique centerpiece ideas? We found a couple online for the inventive and fun couples. Buy glass fish bowls at the dollar store and fill them with fish. You can find goldfish pretty inexpensively either at Walmart or a local pet store. If you have the money try to find beta fish in your wedding colors. One word of caution if using live fish be sure to give their water lots of surface area to provide enough oxygen. The last thing you want is a bunch of dead fish decorating your table. Let the children in attendance take the fish home with the permission of their parents of course. One couple wanted to be whimsical at their reception so they collected up all the board games they loved as children ants in the pants, monopoly, sorry, etc. These were arranged on the tables with decorative accents surrounding them. This can be great for the children in attendance but don't be surprised if the adults play with them too. Another bride wanted to reflect the personalities of her and her groom. They were country people she says and liked a cold beer on occasion. She took long neck beer bottles and steamed the labels off of them. She created their own beer labels on her computer and glued them on with a hot glue gun. She splatter painted them before attaching the labels and tied each with a piece of twine. Truly unique we think. We like the idea of taking a pint-sized mason jar and wrapping it with tissue paper tying a ribbon around the neck to secure it. Place flowers in the jar, potpourri or whatever you think fits you as a couple. If you're getting married around a holiday you can come across some fun decorations that celebrate that holiday at Christmas spray paint pine cones silver and gold and surround them with pine sprigs. Having an Easter wedding. Use plastic Easter eggs and that annoying plastic grass you put in the Easter baskets. If you're having an outdoor reception, decorate around that. Use lots of live flowers and greenery to reflect the beauty of Mother Nature surrounding you. If it's windy, avoid using candles and be sure any balloons are secured so they don't blow away. Now that you've got the place decorated you may want to consider using favors as additional decorations. Wedding favors. Some brides don't like the idea of giving gifts to her guests but we think it's a nice gesture as a thank you for attending your special day. These favors can be elegant, fun or practical. 
we prefer the practical. Here are some great suggestions for fun and unique wedding favors. Divinity Fudge makes delicious cheap wedding favors. Wrapped up in white tulle and tied with a white ribbon it would be beautiful. Add a tag you make yourself with a little message like love is divine. Cut out the tag with scallop scissors and punch a hole for the ribbon. One warning, divinity doesn't come out well in high humidity. Regular candles are nice too for cheap wedding favors. Wrap in tulle and tie with ribbon. Stick a small flower in the ribbon. Tree seedlings such as citrus or any kind of tree, are something everybody would love. They will always remember your wedding with this unique wedding favor idea. Wrap the plastic pot to disguise. Flower seedlings or seed packets are a nice wedding favor. Wrap in any way that is appropriate for your wedding. Tie with ribbon, graphia or paper ribbon. Make wine glass markers from wire and beads. You can find instructions at the craft store. One is enough for a wedding party favor. Place in a small box and tie with ribbon. Sachets made from lavender. Make a small bag from lace. Sew up three sides. Put the lavender in and sew up fourth side. Attach a small silk flower. Put puris in drawstring bags made of lace or tulle are pretty. They smell nice too. You can use any kind of bag that's easy for you to make. Everybody loves herbs. Buy small ones and place plastic container right into a small terracotta pot. Put some moss around the top to disguise the plastic planter. Include a pretty tag with instructions for care attached to a ribbon tied around the pot. A strawberry plant is another live wedding favor idea. It can be presented in the same way as an herb. Anything of this nature that is in season is appreciated. Candies such as M&Ms in your wedding colors, kisses or hugs, mints, a wonderful piece of chocolate or any kind that you would like, look great in a cupcake liner. They come in different sizes and colors. Get M&Ms in your wedding colors www.colorworks.com Place them in plastic bags and tie a ribbon on them. For an outdoor wedding, consider buying umbrellas for a dollar a piece at the dollar store. Wrap them in ribbons with your colors. This of course is for a smaller wedding only but can be a great gift to help shield guests from inclement weather or the sun. Buy plain chocolate bars in bulk or get the miniature version. Print out new labels on your computer that you personalize for yourself and wrap them around the bars. Make your own CD using your favorite songs. Include the first dance song, the cake cutting song and all the traditional songs. Make CD covers with your picture on it and gave all your guests a copy of the CD. You can also make general mix CDs with all of your favorite songs on it not just the wedding ones. For a Christmas wedding, give each guest a Christmas ornament. Take a plain ball type ornament and use a paint pen to personalize with your name and the date of your wedding. Do you and your intended share a love of something unique? Are you big NASCAR fan? Love to golf? Rabbit about a sports team? Gear your favors around these unique characteristics that are you. Also unless you have your heart set on taking home your table decorations, consider giving them away to guests. A fun way to do this is to take a hint from most class reunions. Give one to the guests that travel the farthest, the ones who have married the longest, married the shortest, etc. This helps bring people into your reception and make them feel like a bigger part of your special day. Perhaps the largest expense of your reception is food. Let's look at some viable options for feeding you and your guests without having to mortgage your house. Yummy yummy food can take a huge chunk out of your wedding budget. It's often difficult to figure out what's acceptable as it's an area in which experts' etiquette or otherwise opinions vary widely. It can also be difficult to choose what type of food to serve at your reception especially when you consider all of the different varieties of food available to you. If you're having your reception at a hall that offers food service as part of the package, choose your menu wisely. While you may dream of a steak and lobster meal at your reception this will be quite expensive and is not really viable when throwing a wedding on a budget. There's nothing wrong with an elegantly prepared chicken breast for your wedding meal. Perhaps offer a vegetarian alternative like fish as well. Beef tends to be more expensive than poultry or fish so be completely committed if you must have steak, you'll pay for it. Consider having order waivers if your reception hall will be catering. Almost always, these will be cheaper than a sit-down meal and guests can enjoy them just as much. Here are some general tips for your wedding dinner catered by your reception hall. It's a myth that a buffet-style meal is less expensive than a served one. 
In reality buffets require more food and more labor so their cost is higher. If you're working with a smaller group say 40 to 70, piggyback onto another group's menu. This allows the hotel to buy in bulk and lowers your price. Whenever possible, order in bulk yourself. Consider other main entrees besides beef and chicken. Chefs can do a lot of things with pastas and the price is usually very reasonable. Allow the chef to try out his new original recipes with your group. Most welcome the chance to be creative and lower the price per serving in exchange for the group's feedback. Be careful that it's not something too exotic, though. Lamb or swordfish might not appeal to everyone in your party. Negotiate house wine price with dinner versus a specialty wine. Find out how the caterer hotel taxes food. If gratuity is part of the tax bill, the cost will be more. For halls that will allow you to bring in your own caterer the key here is to shop around. Check with a local family restaurant and see if they have bulk meals they will offer for your reception. Almost all or at the very least, will try for the money. At my first wedding, we did this. At just $2.15 a plate for 200 people, we got fried chicken and ham, mashed potatoes, green beans, corn, rolls, butter, coffee, tea, and all the utensils including plates and napkins. All of our guests ate till they were full and we had food left over. It was very much worth the cost. The truly frugal bride will probably want to do what we did at my second wedding though. As I've mentioned what's this, the 100th time. Family and friends pitched in a lot for us as a wedding gift. My uncle has a business where he smokes meat for people. He smoked some pork butts that I got discounted from the local butcher. We shredded the meat and added barbecue sauce for pork sandwiches. The buns were bought at Aldi for 29 cents a package. My dad has a rather large family which provides me with four aunts along with two other ladies I consider family making six aunts in total. Each offered up a dish for my reception. One made macaroni salad, one made potato salad. We had coleslaw, a green tossed salad, green bean casserole and baked beans. I bought huge bags of potato chips and all the utensils in bulk at Sam's Club and we had a simple, homemade, and very tasty meal. Along those lines, you may want to explore a potluck reception. The potluck reception don't be shy to pursue this potluck reception idea. It's truly the traditional way to celebrate, and it's truly the number one low-budget wedding option. Today's weddings are so commercialized, you will learn that caterers offer very limited menus to very limited budgets. Guests will likely be very pleased and welcome the idea of a potluck reception. The potluck reception goes well with any wedding theme. If you're shy about approaching this option you can simply call it an old-time traditional wedding celebration the potluck dinner will soon be seen quite naturally and number one will even question it. You may even want to pick an old-time theme for your decorating and favors. This will further incorporate the idea of an old-time traditional theme. Why not try a 50s theme or a 20s theme? These are both popular old-time themes. Simply slip an added note with the invite or on the invite, to give guests this option. For example the note might read, Our reception will be an old-time traditional celebration with a potluck dinner. Please check here if you would like to bring a dish for the reception in place of a wedding gift. Call with dish suggestions please. Have them call to get or offer suggestions on a dish so you have control over the menu. Number one is obligated to participate but I'm sure you will be surprised at how many guests will opt for this. You and your guests will be equally surprised at the great variety and quality of the dishes provided. Guests will want to bring only their best recipes to a grand occasion such as a wedding reception. Here are some descriptions of a few reception types in which a full meal is not served. All of these options are less expensive than a full meal whether buffet style or sit down if you're willing to do most of the work yourself. All of these receptions are acceptable if you aren't holding the reception during meal time. Breakfast is often served around 8 a.m., lunch at 12 p.m. and dinner at 6 p.m. and these are the times in which a full meal is generally expected by guests. These times also vary depending on your area. You should hold your reception two hours before or after these times if not considering a full meal. Cake and punch reception. The most common time of day that this type of reception is held is early afternoon approximately 2 p.m. but it can also occur in mid-morning approximately 10 a.m. A cake and punch reception generally consists of the wedding cake and refreshments.
refreshments can include punch, coffee, tea, champagne, etc. You can also supplement the wedding cake with other types of cake in different flavors and textures. Dessert reception. This type of reception is one in which desserts are served. Desserts can include pies, cakes, donuts, cookies, pastries, brownies, etc. Another option, which can be combined with a normal dessert reception if you'd like is a Sunday bar. In this type of reception you serve bowls of ice cream, usually vanilla, and let your guests choose their topping. Toppings can include chocolate or fudge sauce, shredded coconut, chocolate chips, crushed walnuts, whipped cream, fruit toppings, etc. Basically the same things you'd find in any Sunday bar. Summer is the most common time of year for a Sunday bar. A normal dessert bar can be used year-round though as there are desserts specific to season. For example, pumpkin pie and apple pie would be a great choice for fall weddings. This type of reception is also an example of an inexpensive choice if you purchase the items on your own. Order waivers reception. There are actually two distinct types of order waivers receptions. The first is light order wives and consists of a lighter fare than the second which is a heavy order wives menu. A light menu often includes items such as crackers, vegetable platters with dip, fruit, cheese, etc. A heavy order wives often includes these as well as items such as meat and cheese trays, chicken fingers, egg rolls, etc. These types of receptions are also casually called finger food receptions in some areas. In order to save money on this type of reception check your local grocery store deli for prices on meat and cheese trays as well as vegetable and cracker and cheese platters. Their prices are often very reasonable. Another option is to buy the ingredients yourself. Tea or coffee reception. This type of reception is a relic from a bygone era. Originally tea receptions were meant to reflect the mood of an afternoon tea. An authentic tea reception will include items such as Petit Four's watercress sandwiches, cucumber sandwiches, scones biscuits, etc. Be sure to cut the crusts off the sandwiches and cut in a diagonal cross X shape for an authentic look. If you're looking for a more modern approach you can serve coffee with or in place of the tea. You can also serve bite-sized pieces of cake such as carrot any manner of sandwich which is easy to cut cinnamon rolls etc. This type of reception is relatively inexpensive depending on the items you decide to serve and can be relaxing for both the couple and the guests. Salad reception. This choice is becoming more popular and is a viable choice for vegetarians who don't want to serve a full meal. Items served can include green lettuce, spinach salads, fruit salads, pasta salads, potato salads, lacto ovo, coleslaw lacto ovo, etc. A veggie bar to supplement green salads can be added as well and may have such choices as chopped onions, carrots baby or sliced, celery, broccoli, mushrooms, diced tomatoes, sliced cucumbers, etc. A salad dressing bar can be chosen as well and may include such choices as vinegar and oil, Italian dressing, garlic and olive oil, balsamic vinegar and lemon juice, etc. If you're a lacto-ovo vegetarian other dressing choices could include blue cheese, green goddess, ranch, french, etc. This type of reception is also inexpensive if you prepare most of the items yourself. Some other general ideas for do-it-yourself food at the reception include try a pasta reception in which your guests are served plain pasta with their choice of toppings have a Mexican buffet. Provide simple lunch meats and cheeses with bread for sandwiches. If you're a member of a church and will be having your reception there check with the ladies auxiliary and see if they'll do the food in exchange for a donation to their organization. Try a local service organization the Kiwanis, the JCs call a community college and see if their culinary students would cook for you if you provide the food there is some debate on whether it's a good idea to add a line on your invitation stating what type of reception is occurring. Some examples of this are cake and punch reception to follow ceremony, light order waivers reception to follow at 2 o'clock, and dessert reception. Following ceremony. My personal opinion is that it makes it easier not only for the couple but for the guests as well. It's a clear way for the couple to inform guests that a full meal should not be expected and guests have the option of eating a meal if needed prior to or after the wedding. Another important aspect of cuisine at the wedding is the cake. You don't have to spend a fortune to have a delicious and beautiful wedding cake. Calling Betty Crocker. Your cake is the centerpiece of the reception. It's a scrumptious dessert as well as part of a tradition the beautiful or messy cutting of the cake. Look 
with lots of different ideas before you decide what you want. Visit bakeries and peruse bridal magazines. You might also find inspiration at a toy store in China patterns or from your favorite candies. Remember fancy cakes from the bakery are at expensive anywhere from $3 to $15 a slice plus other charges like delivery, etc. Simple cakes can be very elegant. We'll give you great ideas to have a marvelous confection that will long be remembered after it's eaten and smashed in the face of the bride and groom. Consider simplicity with your cake. The actual one you have on display doesn't have to be your entire guest list. Try out a simple two-tiered number and then have a sheet cake in the kitchen to serve to guests. Why not try cupcakes as an alternative to the traditional tiered cake? These can be made in a variety of flavors and arranged on a tiered rack or in a creative design on the cake table. Of course the best way to save the most on a wedding is to make it yourself or have a friend or relative bake it. Consider the cost of some cake mixes and frosting and you can see how baking your own cake can save money. Wedding cakes don't have to be elaborate, just tasty. When decorating consider using fresh flowers. This will add some real class to the cake and bring in the colors of your wedding too. The cake topper is another place where you can show your uniqueness as a couple. My second husband and I are avid golfers. My mom found some miniature really small plastic drivers that just happened to be white. She tied them together with ribbon and this is what adorned our cake. Consider a matchbox car for the NASCAR fans. How about one of those headliner figures in your favorite team for a sports couple? Do you both like to fish? No don't put a fish on top of your cake but you can put a lure or bobber up there. Please though buy it and you don't just grab something from your tackle box. Many couples want to have mints and nuts to go along with the cake. This is fine but you should buy the nuts in bulk from a warehouse store and make the mints yourself. Homemade mints can be frozen well in advance and still taste delicious when they're thawed out. Try this delicious recipe. Wedding cream mints 1 3 ounce package cream cheese softened 3 cups powdered sugar food coloring in your wedding colors flavoring available at most grocery stores peppermint preferably mixed cheese flavoring and coloring till well blended. Slowly add sugar. Knead in with fingers as mixture thickens. Roll into small balls then into granulated sugar. Press flat with a spoon. Refrigerate or freeze. If freezing, pour in refrigerator one to two days prior to serving. This makes 50 to 75 mints. Plan two mints per person. Guests cannot have food and cake alone at your reception. Let's explore the question of beverages. To party or not to party the question of whether or not to serve alcohol at your wedding is one that can cause dissension in the ranks of family. We'll address that in a moment. Plan to have on hand coffee. You can borrow a large coffee dispenser from the local church or your reception hall will probably have one on hand for you to use. Buy a large can of coffee on sale and brew it yourself. Iced tea is always good to have as well. You can get family-sized tea bags at most grocery stores and brew the tea in your coffee pot. Rinse it out good first. Put the brewed tea in a large cooler dispenser, add some water and ice. If you want to add sugar do but many guests prefer to add their own so we suggest leaving it unsweetened and providing sugar at the tables. Soda can be expensive but is a great hit with the kids. Buy 2 liter bottles and plastic cups instead of cans. Have a large cooler filled with ice as well. We recommend the smaller cups since the guests are more likely to drink it all instead of leaving some in the bottom. It's a small way to conserve on the amount used. Unless you're rabid about the taste of name brand sodas the store brand can often be just as good and much less expensive. Punch is always good to have at a wedding reception. We're willing to bet you know someone who owns a punch bowl so borrow it. Don't go overboard on the punch though. Many people will only have a cup or two and you don't want to have leftover. It's not that great the second day. A good basic punch recipe is to mix together a 2 liter bottle of lemon lime soda, a canned bottle of fruit punch and flavored sherbet. You can also use plain vanilla ice cream. Stir together until the sherbet or ice cream is melted. Add ice. Now let's address the alcohol question. For some people it's a no-brainer. No alcohol, no drunken relatives to spoil the day. In many families this option is a must. I'm reminded of the reception where the bride's grandma got drunk and picked a fight with the groom's grandma. They ended up tangling on the floor and an ambulance had to be called. 
no bride wants that is a memory of their special day. Where I come from, it's just not a proper wedding reception without drinks. For the frugal bride on a budget, however alcohol can be a huge fuss. There are ways you can save if you will be having cocktails at your wedding. First you need to check with your reception hall to see if you must purchase liquor directly from them or if you can bring it in yourself. If you have to get it from them, negotiate a price. They're usually willing to give a little knowing that you're investing your money in them for the reception. Most people can't afford to have an open bar for the duration of the reception. Just to clarify, an open bar is one where guests can drink whatever and how much they want and the bride and groom pay the bill. We suggest having open bar for only an hour or two. You can calculate just how much you're able to pay for a bar bill and instruct the bartender to cut off the open bar when you reach that point. Some experts think it's an insult to ask guests to pay for their own drinks. We beg to differ on this point. Drinking is optional. With the couple providing a meal, music, and socialization, asking them to pay for everyone's drunk is just not feasible for the everyday Joe. If you do want to have an open bar it's a good idea to limit that to beer and wine only and opting out of pricey mixed drinks that can add up quickly. Insist that bartenders use shot glasses. This keeps drinks uniform and if you're charged per bottle prevents bartenders from pouring heavy to go through more bottles. If you are allowed to provide your own liquor this of course would be the best way to save on alcohol at your wedding. For large groups buy beer by the keg not the bottle. Contact a nearby winery and ask about bulk discounts. Buy liquor at warehouse stores like Sam's or Costco as well. Don't think you have to have absolutely every type of liquor on hand. If guests want an exotic drink, they're out of luck. Buy only the basics, vodka, whiskey, rum and possibly gin. We suggest having on hand some juices as well orange, cranberry and pineapple. You should also have cola and lemon lime sodas. We strongly suggest having a bartender on hand instead of asking your guests to make their own drinks. You might find yourself running out of liquor quite quickly that way. Perhaps enlist the services of a friend to pour drinks. Better yet ask several friends to take a turn for an hour at a time. Your reception hall might have someone willing to do it as well. A rather unconventional but sometimes feasible idea for liquor is to have guests bring their own alcohol. That way they have what they prefer and you don't have the expense. Also consider making your own wine spritzes. One couple I know rented a champagne fountain from a party rental place and put the spritzer in it instead of champagne. Mix equal parts of lemon lime soda and wine and you have a tasty alternative to straight wine or beer. For my first wedding, we were very limited on our budget for alcohol. We had purchased three kegs of beer wholesale from a family friend who owned a liquor store but my future-in-laws at the time wanted to have liquor available too. What did we do? Raided the liquor cabinets at home. We were able to purchase a few bottles but when we brought together what we found in both my parents' house and their house we had a lot of alcohol available and took home what wasn't used. Above all, make sure that any of your guests who have had too much to drink won't be driving home. You may want to have on hand the number of a taxi service or provide one yourself with teenage family members. Have someone in charge of keeping an eye on those who are inebriated and someone else to enforce the requirement that they not drink and drive. They may be angry that night but they'll thank you in the morning through the haze of their hangover. The final aspect of your reception you'll need to decide on is music. Boogie Oogie Oogie A wedding reception is a party to celebrate the union of two special people. Most celebrations include music to express the joy everyone is feeling. What are your options when you're on a budget? Varied. Most people like to have a disc jockey at their reception if only because they have a large selection of music available to please the various age groups you'll have there. Disc jockeys are probably less expensive than bands but they can be a bit pricey too. Consider too that with a DJ, you'll also have an MC to move the reception along. We suggest you shop around extensively when looking for a DJ. Consider calling a local college to see if they can recommend a talented TV R major who might be willing to take the job. When picking out music, make sure you take into consideration the guests. An all-rap repertoire probably isn't appropriate but all big band music isn't either. Make sure there's a mix of both to please both young and old. To encourage guests to dance, assign each table a love song, when the band or DJ plays the song that table should get up to dance. You know likely know whether this would work or not with your crowd but it's a neat idea. To be honest,
honest really a very small percentage of the human race enjoys the chicken dance, macarena and electric slide.